What's up, Gene? Hey, JC. It's 115 degrees right now in Las Vegas. You know what's hotter than the temperatures out here? No. The DeLorean we're about to see. Awesome. 1981 DeLorean, 13,000 original miles. Mike at Classic and Collectible Cars right up the street is waiting for us. You ready? Let's do Follow it. Me. Don't overheat. Look at this. <laughs> Mike! <laughs> 13,000 original miles on this DeLorean. Holy cow. Dude, Mike! Hi, I'm Mike Nickel, and this is my shop, Classic and Collectible Cars. Hey. Mike, thanks for having us out again, man. Well, always happy to see you. <laughs> this is always, always a treat. <laughs> so here's the backstory. I was driving by earlier in the week, right. and I saw this. I saw the DMC in the garage, right. and I immediately texted Mike. I'm like, is that a DeLorean? You write back, yes, and it's got 13,000 original miles it on does. it. Yes. Where did you get this thing? So, shockingly enough, right here in Vegas. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you, you know, we get a lot of calls every day for, you know, people having cars for sale, and. Frankly, most of them, I'm like, yeah, it sounds not like, I'm, not like what I'm looking for. But this guy calls and says, hey, would you be interested in a DeLorean? Mm -hmm. I says, what's your address? I'm on my way. Yeah, right. So I bolt out uh, to the Northwest and, uh, you know, he opens his garage door and there's this DeLorean covered in dust. No. Yeah. And so I start talking to him and says, well, so what's the story, right? Because mm -hmm. whenever you have a a, a specialty car like this, a unique car like this, there's, there's, there's always a story to mm -hmm. it. So, happens that this was his father's car. He, his dad was the original owner. It sold uh, in Visalia, California. Um, his father, unfortunately, had passed away and left him the car. And, um, and that was back in 2009. And uh, back then, he had, he had, it had been sitting for a while back then too, hence the, the 13,400 uh, original miles on the car. Sure, yeah. So he took it to a, uh, uh, an actually a DeLorean shop in, uh, in Southern California, and he had the car completely gone through bumper to bumper. Spent almost $20,000 going through the car, wow. doing whatever it needed to get it back up on the road. So as time goes, he, that was back in 2010, uh, he had moved to Las Vegas, uh -huh. brought the car with him, and then drove it about, he said, estimated about 500 miles, and then in around 2012, 2013, he just slowly quit driving it. And for 10 years in his garage, it sat, and he never moved it. And so now it's found its way to your shop. I mean, there's so much to talk about with the car. Brushed stainless steel, correct? Correct. DMC for the DeLorean Motor Company. John DeLorean, I mean, you could spend hours talking about him. Right. An automotive maverick. He is, yeah. I mean, we, uh, and he's a legend in, in, in uh, automotive history. I mean, not as a big name like Shelby or Iacocca or anything, but John DeLorean is more famously known for somewhat being the father of the GTO. Yes, yeah. So a huge muscle car horsepower guy. Gene, come around here, because I want to point something out too. Is, 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 I mean, we all, so many of us know this car from Back to the Future. I mean, but it has such a bigger backstory than just Back to the Future. But if you ever notice how symmetrical this is, the DMC, it's perfectly, it's perfectly symmetrical, which I think is a cool little uh, nuance. And it's a DMC 12, right? Correct. 12 because they were gonna sell it for $12,000. Which didn't work it out. Didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. Still stuck with the DMC 12. Uh -huh. Let's walk around the car itself because this is the trunk up front. Here. Yes. Um, and gas gate. Correct. For gas here. Yep. That slides right up. Yep. Which is a cool thing to see too because I think and the uh, months after or later on, you have to lift up the entire right. trunk to get to it. Yes. So that's a convenience factor yes. right there. Uh -huh. Early production car okay. uh, had, had those. Because this is an 81. They, 81, first 81. year. Uh -huh. So it's, I think it's uh, like 2143. Uh, uh, so it's, it's fairly early production. Uh, and that was one of the features of the early production cars. And there's about, what, 10,000 of these made? Uh, yeah, around those numbers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not a lot. I'll, I'll let you open it up because the, the gold wing doors. Yeah, the, the other signature of the car. 
Now, where do you stand? Because so many people, um, they get these and they convert it into the time machine from Back to the Future. Sure. And you have the people that have the, the love and passion for that movie, and then you have the purists that want it in this form. Where's your heart lie? Uh, somewhat in the middle. Yeah. So I am more of a purist, so I appreciate the originality and the way that it was designed. Um, and, and that's what I, I like in all cars. Uh, However, I, I can appreciate the fact that what made this car so popular, so famous, was the movie, mm -hmm. right? And without the movie, I, I don't think these cars have the following that they do now. Yeah. So uh, I guess it kind of depends on the car. So like this car being a, a, a very low mile, original, untouched car, I would never ever fathom making, you know, making this a time machine you know, movie car. Now. If you found one that had 100,000 miles on it and uh -huh. was kind of a little beat up, well, then why not do that? Yeah, that's the one you want to do it to, but not, not a pure car. And with 13,000 miles, so original. I mean, the, the interior itself, too. Spectacular interior. Yeah, the leather's still nice and soft. I mean, the, the nice thing is that it, the car had always been kept inside. It was only driven on nice days. Uh, you know, and the, the guy says, look, this was my father's baby. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it always had the best of care. You know, unfortunately, it had gotten sick and it let it sit, and then, you know, you know, th things deteriorate from lack, you know, really just from lack of use and everything. So, um, but it, it's not, it's not a hard car to get resurrected again. I mean, they still make tons of parts for these things, um, um, and you can get them going again fairly easily. Do we see the engine? Yeah. Is it back here to pop it open. Uh, uh, so yeah, yes. Yeah, so let me see here. So this here, and let me see if it's open. Nope. There is the. Yep. There. And as as far as. Because I think for anyone too, I remember watching Back to the Future and seeing this as a time machine. And as a kid going, this, that car is so cool. That was my first introduction to the DeLorean. And there's always one guy, an older brother, an uncle, who makes the comment, too bad it's a piece of crap car. They always pull up on that little. They, someone always has a negative comment about the DeLorean. Where do you stand as far as the automotive excellence of a DMC-12? Uh, they're not. <laughs> They're not, I, I, and I and I no disrespect to people who love DeLoreans. <laughs> so you were the guy in the group, and I'm like, look at that time machine. Like the car's a piece of crap. Yeah, yeah. So if you, and it's not the fault of the car, you know. Yeah. And that's more the backstory of of John DeLorean and his development of this car. Is it? You know, I think his goal, you know, he wanted to make this a, a car that would compete with a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a mm -hmm. Porsche and all that. Frankly, he just ran out of money, yeah. you know. And, and, and so it, as part of that, he kind of, you know, he, he kept kind of downgrading to get to what he could afford to finally build the car. So this, this is, a, you know, a, a kind of a hybrid engine, not by gas and electric, but uh, Renault, uh, um, uh, Volvo and Peugeot all had, uh, you know, had um, um, a part in this engine. Uh, and it was, uh, I guess, I'm not an, a complete expert on European engines, but it was a fairly common engine, in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, developed in Europe. And it was affordable for him, enough to where he could get enough of them to go ahead and start production uh, on the car. And, and that was kind of his downfall, too, is the lack of money, too. Google the story, if you're watching this, about the John DeLorean and the, uh, the cocaine Sting yes. with the FBI and everything, they, they, that happens, and then the production stops on, on the car. You did mention that too, we're okay, so we're talking about the, um, the dependability of the DeLorean. Is, is it a quality car? Uh, the legend goes is that um, DeLorean was friends with a bunch of celebrities, and Johnny Carson and Sammy Davis Jr. both invested in the company. Mm -hmm. So Johnny Carson was one of the first guys to get a DeLorean. So Johnny Carson is driving the, to the Tonight Show to go to work in LA, and what happens? His DeLorean breaks down. Imagine seeing that. Hey, there's Johnny Carson in a DeLorean on the side of the road. Well, and, and it's funny because in the, in the documentation I have on this car, yeah. this car, in the first six months that he had it, he, it was back and forth to the shop five or six times. Really? Yeah. For just lots of little nitnoy type items. Um, and yeah, quality control wasn't, you know, wasn't a big thing. And, but again, you know, if, if you kind of get past it, you know, if you, when you look at any other car that was built in 1981, mm -hmm. nothing comes close yes. to yep. the look and design of this car. Yes. And, yep. and frankly, if John DeLorean had the money to, to spend more time in the development, this would have been a phenomenal supercar. Yes. Um, but it just didn't go that way, which again, is, to me, is kind of part of its mystique. You know, it, it is the story behind it. Um, you, yeah, people see this today. You go back to 1981, 1981. This is a pretty cool car. 
I mean, this is, this is a game changer. Unlike anything on the road. It truly really is. Can we go for a ride? Absolutely. I don't know, I don't know where you're gonna sit, Gene. Um, there's no there. back seat. There's no back Definitely. seat. No, uh, yeah, no back seat. <laughs> well, strap him to the roof. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but then Back to the Future, in Back to the Future, wasn't the scene with Marty and Doc and the girlfriend in the back? She was like stuffed in the middle. She was yeah. stuffed in the middle. Okay, yeah. we won't do that to you, Gene. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Unless we're going back in time, but no. I don't. We don't have the yeah. capabilities. So the funny thing in this is that, if, it, it, so obviously the, the thing's all about 88 miles an hour, yeah. right? So in 1981, US cars only had 85 mile an hour um, speedometers yeah, uh -huh. uh, because it was all about tra safety back then. The speed limit was 55 miles an hour, conserving fuel and all that. So I guess I understand the story is that they actually put a Canadian speedometer for the Canadian cars in there uh -huh. because they read in kilometers. So what you were actually seeing was 88 kilometers per hour, not 88 miles per hour. That's a little fun yeah. fact. <laughs> huh. Go, the doors just pushed down? Yeah, so you just gotta kinda, actually you have to kind of slam them a little bit. So you just kind of get here and just I mean, this is not one of the neatest things. How cool is this? Please start. <laughs> Hit the steering wheel like Michael J. Fox. <laughs> oh, man. Also love two back, the kind of waffle style taillights back here. And also to DeLorean down here at the bottom. Um, sometimes you will see a DeLorean with this in white. You see that in white, whoever owns the car painted it white. It didn't come colored, just the black DeLorean name right here. And rather weak looking tailpipes too. Right, watch this too. So I got my GoPro to go along, but for the door. I mean, it still has, it, it goes up pretty much all the way, a little push at the end. Yeah. But these, it's the original suspension here for? Well, those have been redone. Yeah. yeah, they're typical to go bad. And people too sometimes criticize this gold wing door. You can park a car right here. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hit it. Yeah. yeah, we're good. All right. You just have to remember to duck. Yeah, it's true. Oh my gosh, would it be great if I knocked myself out? Yeah. So all you do is just grab the strap, grab the pull strap. it down. Hard? Yeah. And everything inside here is all they were, that was the original. Yeah, so this is the original, uh, believe it or not, Craco, or no, I'm sorry, Craig was the, uh, was the original radio, and that is the original, the original radio. That is great. Wait, you gotta put it to 94.1. Of course. I'll yeah. turn the volume down so no, we don't get YouTube ding, but that's the radio station I work for. I mean, the fact that I'm. Oh, that's so good. I'll turn the volume down so I can see it. But the fact that I'm sitting in a DeLorean right now, listening to the radio station I work for, is a pretty epic <laughs> moment, Mike. Stick to, some of them did come, come automatic, were, right? Some of them were automatics, yeah. yep. The stick was more sporty, you know. I'm grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> this is my first time, I've, I've sat in a DeLorean. This is my first time going for a ride in a DeLorean. So it is, um, it's, Kind of underwhelming. I mean, you drive you drive your Challenger, and you know how. How is stainless steel in the heat in Las Vegas? Uh, hot. Yeah. It absolutely does not reflect heat. It absorbs it. So this car in the in the heat, it cooks. You fry eggs on the hood if you wanted to. And this is the only little window that goes down. The big window. Yes. Okay. And that's because of the gold wing doors. Yeah. I don't think they had any place to put the window inside oh, the door. Okay, yeah. There were uh, talks too about in the 80s of making a four door DeLorean and then also the off road DeLorean. But of course, all those dreams went out the window when. Yeah, and you know, DeLorean is back. Uh -huh. uh, they are still, uh, they are um, revamping, I think, in Texas as an electric car. And they've teased, um, they've teased their. Uh, the design and it's, uh, I guess it's somewhat similar to to the original here. All these, everything works here. AC, I can feel the AC working. AM, FM radio, is that a cassette though in there It's too? got a cassette, cassette yep, too. of course. A cassette behind the dial there, that's neat. 
So yeah, it does have power windows. Power windows, all right, that Good. work. Yeah. <laughs> Got a squeak, got a, it's it's got, got a squeaky uh, speedometer. I want it to squeak. It's a 1981 DeLorean. So there's the speedometer. Stops at 85. But wait, so in Back to the Future, was it digital in Back to the Future? No. No, no it still was an analog, but it, they, you know, so they built these for Canada too, so yeah. the Canadian cars have, uh, have the, uh, everything's flipped. Uh -huh. Love box here? Uh huh. This has to be one of the nicest DeLoreans in existence. With only 13,000 miles, yeah. you're technically the second owner? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, they're, I mean, you see them pop up every now and then, you know, with 500, 1,000 original miles on them. Uh, because a lot of people, knowing that they were a very special car back mm -hmm. then, um, did uh, buy them and then store them. You know, I mean, you really think, uh, you know, this car, this car sticker for a little over $27,000 in 1981. Well, mm -hmm. you could have bought a new Corvette for $12,000 in 1981. Oh my gosh. So this was a very was expensive a car. Yeah, you bet. And then these were built in Ireland because you couldn't find a plant here in the States. Right. So he ends up going over to Ireland and building the car there. And unfortunately, uh, the fine men and women of Ireland are not car builders, so it takes them a hot minute to figure out how to put together a DeLorean. I think by 83, you know, the mystique was gone. They kind of had developed the reputation for not being great cars. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when the market started going away. Um, but it's just one of those cars, it's really an, an icon of, uh, of American, uh, American his automotive history, you know? What's, it's comfortable too, it's a comfortable ride. Yeah, yeah, they're not too bad. I mean, they're, they're not, they're just not sports cars. Not by, you know, they, they don't particularly handle well. They don't, you know, they're not particularly quick. Um, it's one of those cars that you really buy it for the way it looks, not necessarily for the way it drives. And, and not that it's a bad driving car, but you know, it, it, it's not, it, you know, if you, if you took uh, this car and then went and drove a 19, you know, 90, or I'm sorry, 1981 uh, Porsche 911 SC. Uh -huh. It's night and day. I mean, that Porsche is, even in 1981, that Porsche was an amazing automobile. Um, no power steering? Uh, no, they don't have power steering. They do have power, they have power disc brakes in them, but they don't, it, because they're so light in the front, because they don't have, uh, they don't have uh, the engines in the rear. Uh, they really don't need power steering. It's, so is anyone already making offers on this one? Uh, so I always, I always started the marketing on it yesterday and my phone is ringing off the hook. I'm sure. Yeah, it won't last long. I've gotten, uh, already gotten uh, uh, inquiries as far away as Australia for, for the car. And the looks you just get to, I think every car we drove by, everyone's looking. Oh yeah, people are all over these things. Because when do you ever see one on the road? I mean, yeah, you, never, you, you never, never see them on the road. Never, never. So again, you know, all, all the people of a certain age, you know, if you grew up in the 80s, I mean, this is an iconic oh, car. Yeah. So it's all the guys that are, it's all the 40-something and 50-something year old parents pointing her out, and look at that, you know. That's a DeLorean. You know, telling their kids and their kids, oh, I've never seen anything like that, you know. Okay, to open the so door right here. Up. Just push up. Push up. A little kick there at the end. Well, Mike, thank you so much for Anytime. showing us this. Glad to show it to you. And everything, uh, always for giving us your time <laughs> and showing us your collection. And it was just uh, literally driving by right here. So I'm always texting Mike when I see something like, hey, you got a transport. What are you getting? What do you have now? And had to come down and do this one. So thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Nope. Anytime. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at carsshopsandcollections at gmail.com. That's cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections.